Okay, so now that you've understood the core fundamentals that drive the entire bond valuation process, we can go a little deeper and learn how we go about incorporating the time value of money, bond specific risk, as well as the market risk, i.e. how we go about discounting future cash flows or the bonds payoffs back to the present to get the price of the bond. So what is discounting? Ultimately, discounting is just the process of estimating the value of future cash flows today. In other words, we're looking at cash flows that we earn sometime in the future, and we're discounting them back to the present to see how much they're worth to us right here, right now. Why do we need to do that? Because $1,000 today is worth more than $1,000 in the future. And that's because money loses value over time. If you'll recall, we called this fact the time value of money, and you literally saw this when we looked at the bananas example, where we saw how we went from being able to buy a thousand bananas to uh, 746 bananas. In other words, the value of a thousand dollars decreased over time. And this was just with uh, one single risk, which was inflation and inflation not even being all that high. If we think about discounting as at the process level, ultimately it allows us to see how much future cash flows are worth to us today given the time value of money as well as other risks. So what we've got here is sort of n number of different cash flows. Um, we're right here in year zero, and then you're getting the, this future cash flow, cash flow one in year one, cash flow two in year two, cash flow three in year three, and so on and so forth, and you're getting this up until the nth year. For simplicity, let's assume that all of these cash flows are equal, okay, in nominal terms. So cash flow one is the same as cash flow two, which is the same as cash flow three, and so on and so forth. But of course, given the time value of money, um, we know that the first cash flow, cash flow one, will be worth more than the second cash flow because money loses value over time. And what we want to do here is to discount these cash flows to the present. So we need to get this cash flow one, CF1, and we need to bring it back to year zero to see how much it's worth to us right here, right now. Okay, then we need to take the second cash flow, the cash flow we get in year two, and do the same thing, discount it back to year zero to see how much it's worth to us then. And then we need to do the same thing for the third year, the fourth year, and so on and so forth, you know, until the nth year. Ultimately, we're just taking these future cash flows and we're discounting them back to the present. And the exact same process applies for when we're trying to price bonds. In the context of bonds, rather than having some generic cash flow, we're gonna have coupons, C, that you learn in year one, and then another coupon that you learn in year two, and so on and so forth, until the nth year, where you'll get the final coupon as well as the par value. But at a process level, we're doing exactly the same as before, right? So you're taking this first coupon and you're discounting it all the way back to year zero. Then you're taking the second coupon and you're discounting that all the way back to year zero. And then you're doing the same thing for all of these other coupons, as well as the par value that you get at maturity, and you discount them back to the present. Well, consider any kind of future cash flow from the bonds you're gonna take those future cash flows and you're gonna incorporate the bond specific risk, the time value of money and the market risk. And once you've incorporated these three risks and discounted the cash flows back to the present, you end up with the value of the bond. Now remember when we learned about bond characteristics, I told you that the most important characteristic of all was the yield or the yield to maturity. And that is because all of these risks are incorporated in the yield to maturity, aka YTM, or simply just Y. So the YTM is the crucial ingredient for discounting future cash flows to estimate the value of a bond. The rate is expressed as a percentage and it incorporates all of the risks associated with a given bond. Now, given that we're talking about the risks of a bond, the other side of the coin, or the flip side, of course, is the return. So the YTM shows you the return that you can expect to earn on an annualized basis or semi-annual basis or quarterly basis, depending on the frequency that we're looking at, but it shows you that return given the time value of money and other risks. Now remember in finance, we absolutely love jargon. So of course, there's a whole host of other terms that we use to describe the yield, um, which is the effective rate or the effective interest rate, the interest rate itself, and finally the required rate. Now the required rate, we normally use that from an investor's standpoint or an investor's perspective, because that's the yield or the rate that they require in order to invest in a bond. Importantly, again, the yield is also the internal rate of return of the bond, so you could also call it the IRR. 
Remember we said that the fact that it is the IRR is one of the most important aspects of the yield, and you'll see the importance of this when we look at estimating the yield later on. Now, if we think about the role of the YTM in the discounting process, then remember we said that we're taking these future cash flows, in this case coupons and the par value, and we're discounting it back to the present. I, we're trying to get the present value of future cash flows. Now, the general equation for the present value of future cash flows is given by this. The PV or the present value is equal to the future cash flows discounted back to the present. So you take the future cash flows and you discount it or divide it by one plus R, where R is some discount rate. Now, if this equation is freaking you out, please don't let it freak you out. If you focus your attention on this thing here, which looks like a very funky E, well, this is what we call the sigma summation operator. And all it's doing is adding whatever's in front of it. So in this case, it's adding the cash flow at time t over one plus r to the power of t. And it's doing that starting from the time where t is equal to one and going all the way up to and including the nth observation. So cf over here refers to the future cash flow that you earn at time t and you're discounting or dividing that by one plus r, where r is some discount rate that incorporates the time value of money, firm specific risk and market risk. In the context of pricing bonds, we can take exactly the same equation and just modify it a little bit. So instead of using a random or generic discount rate R, we're gonna use the yield or YTM as the discount rate. So we can end up with the general equation for the price of a bond P as being equal to the present value of future cash flows relating to the bond um, where the cash flows are discounted by one plus y, where y is the yield to maturity. Now, if we specify what these future cash flows are, in the context of bonds, we get two types of cash flows, right? You've got the coupon, C, and the par value, par. So opening up this equation here looks something like this. You've got the discounted value of the coupon, so C at time T over one plus YTM to the power of T, and we're adding up all of these coupons um, consecutively, starting from the first one, where T is equal to one, and going all the way up to and including the nth coupon, which you get once the bond matures. And at the same date, when the bond matures, we also get this par value, par, which we discount or divide by one plus YTM to the power of N. We'll talk about why we're raising this to the power of t and why we're raising this to the power of n in a bit. But for now, all you need to know is that this is the equation that we're gonna be using to price bonds in the general case. Now, the beauty of this equation is that we can modify it to deal with consoles or to deal with zero coupon bonds, as well as uh, deal with straight or vanilla bonds. So throughout the course, we're gonna work with this equation and we'll modify the equation when we're dealing with different types of bonds. Now, when you started this course, I showed you three different bonds, and then later on in the fundamentals video, we zoomed in and focused in on alpha, uh, and we saw that the cash flows are not equal in real terms. So although alpha pays you a $40 coupon every year for five years, the $40 coupon that you get in year one is actually worth more than the $40 coupon you get in year two, which is worth more than the coupon you get in year three, and so on and so forth, when you consider the cash flows in real terms, as well as the other risks associated, so bond specific risk and market risk. And so to incorporate those risks and end up with the price uh, of this bond as at year zero, we'd need to discount these coupons, as well as the par value, back to year zero. So what does the discounting process look like? Well, it's exactly the same as what we talked about just before. So you take the first cash flow that you get in year one and you'll discount it back to year zero. How do you do that? You essentially apply the present value formula. So you take the cash flow or the coupon of $40 and you discount it by one plus the yield raised to the power of one. Why are we raising it to the power of one? Because you're taking this coupon that you get in year one and you're discounting it over one year back to year zero. So if you substitute C1 with the $40 coupon that we've got, you'd have $40 divided by one plus Y raised to the power of one. This right here would be discounting the first coupon over one year back to year zero, given a discount rate of Y or YTM, which is the yield. Then you take the second coupon of $40 and do exactly the same thing. So you discount it back to year zero. How do you do that? Well, you take the coupon, in this case, C2. C2 because it's the coupon you get in year two and you divide it by one plus y raised to the power of two. 
you're raising it to the power of two because we're taking this coupon and discounting it over two years to get to year zero, to get to the present. So with C2 equal to $40, you got $40 divided by one plus Y raised to the power of two. And then you literally repeat this process for the remaining years. So you've got a coupon at year three over one plus Y to the power of three, C4, which is the coupon you get in year four, over one plus y to the power of four. And finally, in the fifth year, you've got the coupon in year five, plus the power that you get in year five, divided by one plus y to the power of five. Again, why are we raising this to the power of five? Because you're taking this cash flow, in this case, the coupon, as well as the power value, and you're discounting it over five years to get to year zero. So when you apply the remaining cash flow figures that we've got here, you get this. And that's pretty much it. All you'd need to do after this is to add them up and you've got the price of the bond. Of course, you'd need to know what the yield is, but that's a whole other topic and it's something we'll look at much later on. The key thing that you need to know for now is that this is how we go about discounting future cash flows and this is how we go about pricing bonds or valuing bonds. Importantly, I know that this looks rather complicated to some of you all, but the beauty of finance is that whenever things start to look a little complicated, there almost always is an easier way to do things. So if we just look at this right here, this uh, long form equation that we've got here can actually simplify and become something much smaller and elegant like this. So you've got $40 over Y multiplied by one minus one over one plus Y to the power of five, and then this par value just discounted as it is. So this right here is the sum of all the coupons uh, discounted back to year zero. So the coupons that you get from year one through to year five. And this is just the par value being discounted back to year zero. To be fair, you don't actually need to get bogged down in the details of this as of now. I'm only showing you this so you know what's possible. We're gonna be working with different forms of this equation throughout the course. So by the time you're finished, you'll be really comfortable with all of them. For now, the only thing you really need to take away is the importance of discounting uh, as well as the process of discounting. Now, if we think about this yield or Y, because the yield is a measure of risk, we can say that the value for bond increases as the risk decreases, and the value for bond decreases as the risk increases. And we can actually see this when we look at the general equation of the price of a bond. If the yield were to increase, well, the denominator here increases, and so the fraction as a whole will decrease. And the same thing applies for when we consider the discounted value of the par value. If the yield were to increase, this fraction here decreases, and so the price of a bond will decrease. Similarly, if the yield were to decrease, then this denominator decreases, and so the fraction as a whole will increase, so the price of the bond increases. So the inverse relationship between the yield and the price is indeed a, a very important and incredibly powerful one. And this isn't something that applies exclusively to bonds. It's actually with any financial security, it's with any asset. So if the risk of any asset increases, its value will decrease. And if the risk of any asset decreases, then its value will increase. If we think about risk in return, on the other hand, they maintain a proportional relationship. So that as the risk of an asset increases, the expected return increases, uh, and as the risk of an asset decreases, the expected return decreases. So if we think about AAA bonds, we know that they are the least risky, and unsurprisingly, they give you the lowest return. And C-rated bonds tend to be the most risky, and unsurprisingly, they give you the highest expected return. So this relationship, remember, is uh, something you need to know for finance as a whole, not just uh, bond valuation or not just any specific part. As the risk of any asset uh, increases, the expected return increases, but the value decreases. And as the risk of any asset uh, decreases, the expected return decreases, but the value increases. All right, so what have we learned today? We learned that discounting is the process of estimating the value of future cash flows today, given the time value of money, bond specific risk and market risk. We learned that the value for bond is given by this beauty over here. So this is all of the cash flows of the bond. CF includes the coupon as well as the par value, which we discount or divide by one plus Y to the power of T. And if you were to get more specific about the cash flows, then we can say that it's the present value of the coupons from T is equal to one through to N, where N is the maturity of the bond, as well as the par value that you get at year N discounted or divided by one plus Y to the power of N.
Another way of writing out this equation is like this. So you've got the individual coupons discounted or divided by one plus y raised to the power of the year or the period by which we need to discount it by. So in this case, you've got the coupon that you're earning in year two or period two, and you're dividing it by one plus y to the power of two because we're discounting this coupon over two years or two periods to get to the value as at year zero. Finally, we learned that for bonds, as well as any other um, asset, risk and expected return are proportional to one another, and risk and value are inversely proportional to one another. So in the context of bonds, as the yield increases, the price or value for bond decreases, and as the yield decreases, the price increases. If any part of this video is not entirely clear, I'd strongly recommend that you rewatch it before moving on. If the equations are freaking you out, please don't let it freak you out because throughout this course, we're gonna rip apart every single equation, one variable at a time, and explain everything step by step. So by the end of each video, you'll be very clear with each concept that we're teaching you. And of course, you've got plenty of practice questions to make sure that you really understand things and that you gain confidence with each concept. In the next video, you learn why we go about dividing cash flows by one plus the yield um, when we're discounting cash flows instead of doing something like say one multiplied by the yield or one minus the yield or one divided by the yield. And you'll also learn more about why we're raising it to the power of uh, a specific number. Ultimately, we do this because of the importance of and the power of compounding. Once you've understood that, you'll be good to go to value bonds from scratch, including dealing with more advanced cases, which is something we'll cover later on. For now though, have a go at the quiz and I'll see you in the next video.